Stockholm Syndrome is a proposed condition in which hostages develop a psychological bond with their captors. It is supposed to result from a rather specific set of circumstances, namely the power imbalances contained in hostage-taking, kidnapping, and abusive relationships. How did Stockholm Syndrome get its name? This condition gets its name from a 1973 bank robbery incident that happened in Stockholm, Sweden. During the six-day standoff with police, many of the captive bank employees became sympathetic toward the bank robbers. Stockholm Syndrome is a psychological condition that occurs when a victim of abuse identifies and attaches, or bonds, positively with their abuser. This syndrome was originally observed when hostages who were kidnapped not only bonded with their kidnappers, but also fell in love with them. Stockholm Syndrome is not fully understood by researchers, psychologists, or law enforcement personnel, and not all agree it is a real phenomenon. Also, people who may be affected by it are often unwilling to comply with authorities because they don't want to incriminate their perpetrator. This is another barrier that makes it difficult to research or understand the syndrome. Signs of Stockholm Syndrome Only a small percentage of people who experience trauma display signs of Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome is characterized by an irrational psychological bond or attachment with an abuser or captor. Law enforcement and psychological professionals who have worked with individuals suspected to have Stockholm Syndrome often observe the following signs. Humanizing and empathizing with their captor, perpetrator, or abuser. A powerful emotional or psychological bond between a victim and their abuser. A victim who tries to protect or defend their captor or abuser from authorities. Denial or minimization of abuse, torture, or other maltreatment of the abuser. Selective memory of times when their abuser was kind or affectionate to them. A refusal to cooperate with authorities trying to intervene, help, or rescue them. A belief in the inherent goodness or humanity of their perpetrator. A desire to please or appease the person abusing, controlling, or mistreating them. A belief that they can prevent abuse, maltreatment through good behavior. Withdrawing from other captors, victims, if applicable, to avoid angering their abuser. Adopting the goals or aligning with the values, objectives of their captor or abuser. 